going to go over this DNX 6990HD with you. This one here would be the Exelon version of the DNX 6190, which is the standard Kenwood version. The difference between this Kenwood Exelon and the standard mainstream Kenwood is a few things. For first, the warranty on the Exelon, if you purchase it, of course, in the correct avenue, you get a two-year instead of a one-year over-the-counter exchange warranty. The Exelon come with full function AV GPS remote, even with the slide side switch to control all the multiple sources. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty big remote, but it does a lot of functions, almost everything that you could do with your finger right there on the screen. So that's definitely very noteworthy. Another thing about this unit is this one here is going to give you not just two volt preamp outputs, but this Exelon version offers six volts. It's three times as, as strong as you're going to find in the standard Kenwood version. So that is also a very good thing. Especially anybody who's going to buy a unit like this or is shopping around to find a unit such as this, they're going to be using this thing most likely with an ampli amplifiers externally. They're going to be powering everything. And this is a very good unit to use as a starting point for all that. That's for sure. I'm very impressed with this Kenwood. Uh, anybody who watches any of my videos, um, I'm a huge fan of JVC, and JVC and Kenwood are one and the same. They don't call it JVC slash Kenwood yet, which I imagine in the future, shortly in the future, they probably start will. I know some of their products that they, they already do it. Um, but it's beautiful. I mean, also, this one here has a little slot for the nav map updates and software updates, which you're not going to find on the standard Kenwood unit. This one here has also got that very fancy, nice, shiny, gloss black finish, which you don't find on the standard Kenwood as well. So that's another little thing we could point out and talk about. Now, this one here has the, the Garmin GPS, which is nothing new. Um, and Garmin is excellent. I use it in my for myself, my own portable use in my my boat. I've used I, I've I've always liked Garmin. I find it to be very good, very updatable. It's always good, solid, you know, software running on those programs. This one actually has a better processor than they've ever had, and that's probably the biggest, latest, greatest thing that this Kenwood or any Kenwood really for this year is you know gonna boast about. And this one here is 22 watts RMS. By four for four channels if you're only use, utilizing it for the power that it that it supports. It's got a fixed panel 6.1 inch touchscreen, which the touchscreen works very well. You know, I'm usually pretty, you know, picky about that kind of stuff. And this one, no complaints. Um, it's very big on Pandora. So if you use that with your iPhone or your Android or your BlackBerry for that matter, it's always on the screen. It's always in your face. It's all you can't miss it. It's always there. This unit also has HD radio built in. Nothing extra to buy. It's very cool about this unit. Bluetooth's built in, so you can do that for audio streaming as well as for the, for the telephone, of course. This one is a standard doubled in, four inch tall type of dash opening. Is what it's going to fit. It'll play a CD, a DVD. It also has an external USB in the back, which I'll get to the end of the video, that's usually how I do it. I usually go through the front, go through the motions, show you the buttons, show you how it works, and then I'll flip it around and I'll show you the back and show you what's going on back there. This one also has a three band parametric EQ with high and low pass filters. So that's um, one thing that I've never really been crazy about with Kenwoods. Um, even though I understand and how to use it and how to create you know, band pass filters and how to tune a system, it's not a big deal for me. I just always like to actually have the bars laid out right in front of me and I like to kind of I'm a very very visual kind of guy um, so that's something you know that's a Kenwood thing you know it's a Kenwood thing um, but you know anybody again like I was saying is gonna buy this unit knows what the hell frequencies and bandpass filters are and how to how to build them how to use them and how to set them up and save them and use them the right way you know for instance if you're gonna have this unit and you're gonna want your front stage to run full range and then your rear fill you want to block out 100 hertz and then you're going to limit your sub at 80 and have a bandpass filter from 80 to that 100 point frequency range this is a real winner to do something like that and Kenwood really did a good job um, it's probably one of the most exciting things I've seen about this radio is the front and rear zone and how simple it is to set it up it's amazing and I could definitely see even a kid in the back seat grabbing a remote and taking 
taking charge of the helm and getting this thing going the way they need it to be. So, for instance, with this one, you could have, you know, your GPS running. Not only does it have the GPS running and it has a, a, a quick info button like most Garmin, but it's also got a split screen. So you could have your iPod here, GPS running, and you can be supporting either Bluetooth on the rear speakers or any other zone. You can mix and match them any way you wanted to do it. Say Pandora in the rear, HD radio in the front with the GPS, you know, coming in when there's something to do, a turn or do this or do that or whatever. Um, very cool, very flexible, very easy to use. I mean, the map, beautiful, laid out very nicely. Like I was telling you, Pandora is always in your face. The menu, the home screen, uh, looks very reminiscent of the Clarions. Um, kind of like the, um, oh boy. Well, I'm going to be doing a review on the NX602 and the 702 when it comes out. But, you know, Kenwood's been having this type of layout. I'm a very big fan of it. I think it's really awesome. Um, it's very smooth. I mean, it works just like you would expect your tablet to work, your phone. Everything is very smooth. It's very fluent. It's very fast. Um, it doesn't wig out. It doesn't freak out and do anything that you don't want it to do. Um, it's a big bone I had to pick with, say, for Pioneers this year. The buttons were too scrunched. It was, it was too sloppy to lay out. It wasn't laid out. The graphic interface, I just didn't like it. Um, this unit, I love. Very nice. They put all the big stuff in the big icons. For your telephone, pow, there you go. Your phone book, incoming calls, missed calls. You could do it by voice through the Bluetooth microphone, which is included, right? Um, direct keypad, so you could just call out. Like I'll call the office. Make sure you, whenever you're going to buy some electronics, you use this number to buy them. Just kidding. Very nice. Very reactive. When you touch the button to do something, it does exactly that. It does the function. Bluetooth setup, very straightforward. I already did this before beforehand. Um, when they enter these uh, these pin codes, which is nothing new, most of them usually use like one two three four or one 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 or whatever it is. I found that my phone didn't even need it. Your phone may be different. It took me and maybe a whole twenty seconds to pair my phone to this unit. That's pretty good. And you can see all these colors and backgrounds and buttons are kind of like going through that little motion. You can change the colors so, th so the optics match your interior just the way you want it to be. And that's going to apply to everything minus the GPS. The GPS is going to look like standard Garmin stuff. That you can't change. And I can understand why. And another cool, I, there's just so many damn cool things about this year. I don't even know where to even really start. Um, <laughs> excuse me, the phone, self-explanatory. I don't have a disc in there. Um, but had you have it, there's a lot of text. It has auto-scroll. It also has like this really cool zoom feature that, that I've never seen. Very cool. It's, it's just so friendly and, and it's very welcoming when you want to utilize this. You know, I really like it. Uh, the GPS, it's very... Uh, to me, it's very familiar because I'm a big Garmin user. So for me, it's like you know, idiot proof. Um, but the but the GPS is so fast. I mean, when you want to punch in a destination, it's like click click, it's done. It's like you got anything else for me? It's it's ready. It's always ready. So that's pretty exciting. Um, as far as the iPod goes, you do need to buy this cable. This here is a what the hell is this? It's a KCA IP two hundred two. You know, one plug for your iPod, and you got the USB, and you got the 3.5 mil, or that's actually got three bars, so it's a little different than 3.5 mil. But that's going to do your uh, your video. These plug into the rear of the unit, unlike the JVC, so that's a desirable feature. Nothing in the front of the unit, just everything in the back. So it's very clean. It's going to be a nice install. Um, this rotary knob is a very welcome feature, because some of these units... Lately, they only give you these flat buttons, or they put them over here. This is nice. I like that. The 7190, of course, is not going to offer that because that's a full 7-inch screen. But for the 6.1, I think they've done a good job of putting it where they put it. Now, for these other icons, 
video that there is just your composite audio video inputs that you would plug in or through RCA again in the rear USB for whatever media you got if it's in card reader or uh, any USB based media really you use that iPod I don't have connected HD radio um, very nice got an ever scroll feature lots of text imports an image I mean it makes it look very homey I like that again everything laid out very well and you can tag up to 50 choices with this all the presets laid out very nice it, it's on AM it's on FM all the buttons that you would ever want to need to need to see or use are always there and again you could always have your GPS touch of a button that's the beauty of this unit you can always go back to wherever you need to be or see something that's going on in the background it's always just a finger touch away very hot I like it Sirius XM this unit is going to utilize this new piece, which is SXV100V1. This is a little different than all the, the models before it. All the models before it, you had to get two pieces, two components, which was the um, KSSRA100, if I'm thinking correctly, which was the interpretation module for Kenwood, plus the SCC1, which is the actual Sirius tuner. So instead of buying the two pieces, now it's half price. You just get the one. One plug, plug it in, put in your antenna, done. It's a wrap. So that's cool. Uh, so we went over that. Again, just to move it on over. Setup screen we're going to get to because that's going to take a minute. Audio as well. Um, Sirius isn't connected. So I guess the next thing to do is the setup. Again, icons, very. it's very easy on the eye, very easy to use. I really like this. Um, some of this stuff doesn't really warrant me going into it and boring you with it, but audio video output is just what you're feeding to, you say, your rear screens, flip down monitor, or whatever. Um, your navigation settings. This can, it's pretty straightforward. Nav to interrupt your um, front left speaker, or the front right, or both. The volume to mute the audio, or to not to mute the audio. Mute the audio, that is the question. Always look at this, not just one back button, two back buttons. Good job, man. I like it. Ooh. Okay, here we go again. Um, okay, we did that, that, that. Software is just a bunch of mumbo-jumbo numbers and letters. Camera, pretty straightforward. You know, if you want it to be over... How you want the override to work, if you want it to always... If, if the wire sees 12 volts during reverse, if you want it to pop on a screen, if you don't, you can always hit a button, override it, see the camera whenever the heck you want to see it. Sources, you could turn these things on and off, so that way that you don't have icons on the home screen that you don't need to have. So again, streamlining it, making it go much faster than, you know, than you could ever hope for. There's even more right there, SXM, that's Sirius XM. Always shortcuts, always little icons, is really nice. Um, you display. Now this is going to change your colors for this and the background. Your background, you could pull something from memory. You could change your default backgrounds, um, change your standby sources, which is good. We'll go right back again. Here's your colors. Okay, so you have to turn the panel scan off because it's going through the, the different colors like it's still in there. There's your set. So, what color do you want it to be today? You want purple? There you go. That's actually a nice purple too. Aqua, green, whatever you want. And you got all these presets so you can set it up for three different users for whatever reason. Or you can go crazy and, and make some custom colors. Change them however you want it to be. Mix a little green, throw a little red in there. Give you like your own little Candace Olsen on HGTV and just get silly with yourself over here if you want. I mean, how much do you need? But it's there. And that, that's the important thing, it's there. That's what it's all about. Getting a whole bunch of toys you just don't need, but you want anyway. And your system. User interface. I forget what this one is, really. Oh, turn on the beep. Remote sensor, turn it on and off. Ever scroll once. Um, your animations. You know, nothing too crazy. Set up security. You can put in a security code. 
touch screen is just a calibration, you know. I'm not going to do that. Let's just go back to the menu real fast. I want to show you something else. The audio. This unit really shines in this department. It really does. I like this. So, your audio control is pretty straightforward. Um, volume offset, that's just going to adjust the different sources. So that way if you have XM is yay high, and then you have the HD radio which is much lower, you don't want to get like into shock when you're changing sources and it's not fluent and level. You can fix that problem there. Up in here, you can change your front, your rear, and your, and your sub-channels. Um, adjust and apply high-pass filters, low-pass filters, band-pass filters, like I was saying. Subsonic filters. Um, really something, I like it. And check this out. This is, this is your dual zone. So you can make your front source, say right now it's defaulted as uh, Sirius and XM, and the rear is your uh, your video. You change that, your front will play HD radio, and your rear, say we'll put on the CD or DVD. And you could have, um, you know, obviously you'd have to run out an RCA to feed the video to the rear screen, but this thing is handling all that and simultaneously doing GPS. That's pretty cool. Or you could just turn it all off. When it's just you in a car and you're just cranking out the tunes and enjoying yourself, turn the thing off. I mean, that's... This thing is a winner. It's very nice. So, I got nothing really bad to say about this unit. Not a darn thing. Maybe if they laid out the EQ a little bit more in detail, more graphic for a visual kind of guy like myself, I'd say it would be nice. Um, but I'm probably barking up a tree. You know, the leaves will never fall. But... That's just my thing. And the other thing is, uh, I guess it's due to the super speed process that they throw in this thing. But I'm not a really a, a big fan of that fan going on. I'm going to try to be quiet for a second. Maybe you could actually hear it. It's subtle, but it's there. I guess maybe when you have your dashboard on, you probably won't be as pronounced as it is just sitting out here like so. So let me get this uh, thing flipped around. I'll show you what's going on in the back real quick. So this here is the back of this DNX 6690. This, my friends, is what separates the men from the boys, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to a stereo. I like to see a lot of stuff back here. And back here, I see a lot of stuff. That makes me happy. And I'm sure it'll make you happy too. So let me explain to you real quick what this stuff is. Right here is your main... Speaker and power harness, nothing exciting happening there. 15 amp fuse, GPS antenna, that's for your Bluetooth mic. These here are your audio video outputs. Right below it, that's your audio video input. That's your rear view camera. These are your super high voltage preamp outputs, 6 volts, very manly, front, rear, and sub. Antenna, comes with a torrid choke or a filter, which is cool. Right there, that is going to be your bus for your Sirius or your XM or Sirius XM. That's that fan I was talking about that I don't really like, but it is what it is. There's your rear USB. I mean, it's nice, man. There's a side view. So, that's my take on the, the new 2012 Kenwood. The 6690 DNX. I give this thing a 9 out of a 10. I'd give it more, but I just don't like that darn fan, um, and that graphic EQ, um, I would have liked to see a little bit more, more visualization, you know, I like, I like to see things, I like things to play with, and I like stuff like that, so, Kenwood, if you're watching it, maybe you could do that in the future, that would be really nice, but I think they did an awesome job, and I'm very tempted to take one of these things home, um, so, check it out, if you're looking for one, I hope this review was helpful to you all, um, if you liked the video, give me a like, if you didn't like the video, Give it a like.